Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Just hours after launching an exploratory committee for a run for governor, James Craig makes it official. I'm going to hold our governor accountable. I'm going to show the governor what leadership looks like. What else the former Detroit police chief had to say during a nationally televised interview. He's charged in his own mother's murder. Tonight we are hearing the shocking 911 call he made moments after her death. But we begin with a tight knit community coming together tonight to try to find a beloved grandfather who is missing. Off the top at 11 tonight, that search has now stretched across three counties. It involves more than 200 volunteers. Family says 79 year old Joe Mendeli went hiking Monday and never came home. Tim Pamplin is in Lapeer County with a night cam. Yes, sir. Case oh. commander checking out. You know, it's close knit and people here care. I need you guys to take water, stay hydrated, all right? First responders and civilians descending en masse into Dryden to search for Grandpa Joseph Mendeli. We have been searching woods, swamp. Mr. Mendeli went missing Monday morning, outdoorsman. He enjoyed hiking the path, less traveled, a fixture in this small town, and hundreds are turning out for the search of the former high school football and baseball coach. It's hell. It's hell looking for your dad lost in the woods. We need to keep going and we need to keep searching for him. So we need to find him. <laughs> we want him home. And the terrain up here is pretty wild. Difficult for helicopters and drones to see what's going on down below. That's why they need boots on the ground. Just a close personal friend of my dad's. The Gasparonis heard about the search, made the 90 minute trek from Livonia. Just show up. I mean, you don't you don't need to have a plan um, other than boots and gear. Um, so just show up ready and they'll tell you what to do. So um, if it's on your heart, just uh, come on out. He's doing what he loved. He loved the outdoors and now he's lost. He's just gotten old and we need help. So as more searchers, young and old, head out on the trails and into the woods around Dryden, they say they're not giving up. They think their grandfather could be laying injured somewhere in the woods. If you want to help, head over to clickondetroit.com. There's information there as to how you can get involved. That is a scene in Dryden tonight with a night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. And really good to see so many people involved. Detroit's former police chief making it official tonight with James Craig telling Fox News he is running for governor. The announcement coming just hours after he launched an exploratory committee to look into a gubernatorial run. Mara McDonald live downtown. By forming that committee, though, Mara, he can now take in donations. That's right, Devin, and it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of money he can raise simply because Governor Whitmer already has a behemoth of a $10 million war chest ready to go. I, I got to tell you, I'm running. James Craig's committee may have the word exploratory in it, but that exploratory really is in name only. There's a timing element here. By filing his committee paperwork today, he can now fundraise and will have until almost the end of October to file his first campaign finance statement. He launched the committee today, not just on Fox News Channel, but a well-produced campaign video. But as a leader, we led from the front, we turned it around, with logo and website, Craig has longtime GOP consultant John Yob on his team, and this rollout has all the hallmarks of a Yob production. Yob managed Governor Rick Snyder's splashy one tough nerd rollout with well produced commercials and did the same quote unquote exploratory committee for Governor Setup. Craig may not be the self funder Snyder was, but he enters the fray with far greater name ID, and as for now, all the sizzle on the GOP side. Back here live, tonight's announcement and that paperwork filing, that is not unexpected. The paperwork you really want to see is what's going to come with that first campaign finance report in October, because that's going to give you an idea of what kind of mojo this campaign really has. And you know, Devin, it's interesting. Uh, former Chief Craig has done two events so far, one in Jackson County and one in Kent County. He has not taken press questions after either. True. It will be interesting to see whether now that he is an official candidate, True. whether that policy changes. Back to you. Especially with uh, such a long time uh, still to go. For over four, I believe we, we did the counting earlier, over 400 days still before we get to the next election day cycle. All right, Mara. It's next year. It feels like it should be this year. Yeah. A Dearborn Heights man will go to trial for the murder of his own mother. Heard in court today what prosecutors say is Aaron Ockel 
confessing to the crime on a 911 call. Jason Colthorpe here with a story that begins with a startling timeline leading up to today, Jason. Yeah, it really does, Kim. It starts last November when uh, Akel was first arrested for attacking his mother. He pleaded guilty to that the following March. Then a month later, he was given probation for that by the judge. And at that hearing, his mother begged the judge to let him out so he could seek help and so she could have contact with him. He agreed to that, but not to let her have contact. And it was less than a month later, she was found murdered, prosecutors say, at the hands of her son. K-1-8 emergency. Yeah, I, I killed my mom. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office alleges that is the voice of Erin Akell at about 4.30 a.m. on May 4th. How did you kill your mom? Strangled her. Police, Mr. Police. She I that. The 911 call was played at Akell's preliminary hearing Wednesday. What did you do to strangle your mom with? It looked like there had been a struggle in the room. One of the officers who responded to the scene described the bedroom at the home on Pardee where he found 73-year-old Ibtisam Field. The officer testified it appeared she had not died recently. Um, I noticed that around her mouth there was dried blood. Um, she had bruises on most of her body, her arms. There were some bruises on her legs. She had a very deep uh, or like a dark red ligature mark around her neck. Was there anything on her face that drew your attention? Uh, there was a plastic bag, like kind of half on her face. The prosecution then read the medical examiner's report into the record that stated Field suffered multiple bruises, multiple abrasions, and died from blunt force trauma and strangulation. And that's a gentle way of putting it. The list of injuries was extensive. Uh, the defense attorney for Akel, by the way, uh, didn't really push back on any of the facts in this, instead opting to mount the defense when it comes to the circuit court level, which will happen. And again, he was bound over for trial. Reporting live tonight, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. All right, Jason. Tonight, three more Michiganders are vaccine sweepstakes winners. Yeah, Jenna Basage from Sterling Heights and Paul Barino of Rockford both won $50,000 via the daily drawings. Latonda Anderson of Grand Blank won the million dollar grand prize, and she explained why she got the vaccine. I was protecting my family. Um, my parents are in their 70s. We wanted to make sure that, um, you know, we did whatever we could to protect them to protect friends, and to even protect people that we don't know. The sweepstakes run through August 3rd. You can still enter to when. We have the details on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Tonight's coronavirus headlines. The United States border with Canada will remain closed a little longer. The U.S. is extending border restrictions through August 21st. That comes, of course, after Canada said it would open its border to fully vaccinated Americans on August 9th. Meanwhile, the Michigan legislature voting today to repeal the 90, 1945 law under which Governor Whitmer issued health and safety restrictions during the pandemic. Murder charges have now been filed in the deadly shooting of a downriver father who was killed in front of his teenage son. 73-year-old Eddie Hicks is accused of shooting and killing 46-year-old Barry Balestri in a dispute over free firewood. This happened back on June 15th at a home on Cornwell near I-94 and Telegraph and Taylor. Hicks is charged with second degree murder, manslaughter and felony firearm. He's set to be arraigned tomorrow. In Oakland County, 21 year old Jawan West is now charged in the death of a woman found shot and killed inside a motel room. The 29 year old woman was shot five times. Her body was found inside the roadway Inn on Stevenson near 14 Mile in Madison Heights. Today, West was charged with murder and possession of a firearm. He was denied bond and will remain at the Oakland County Jail. TSA officers stopped three guns from going through security at Metro Airport. First handgun was found last Wednesday. TSA says the traveler had a concealed carry permit. Then last Friday, two people were stopped with guns. Both of them were arrested. 36 guns have been found at Metro Airport security so far this year. First offense, by the way, for bringing a loaded gun to security is a $4,000 fine. And it gets worse from there if you do it again. <laughs> Yeah. All right, uh, still ahead, the FBI agent at the center of the Whitmer kidnapping case is arrested. The charges he's now facing that could land him 
behind bars for up to 10 years. Here comes Ben. Devin and Kim, the complaint ledger for today's weather uh, had nothing in it, and I suspect tomorrow's is going to be the same. We're going to make it two in a row, and we'll discuss what happens after that coming up. I am knee-deep in water. But first, floodwaters in a Detroit church kept rising and rising during the recent storms. The mistake that led to the massive flooding that the city is now owning up to. Next. 